Hello, welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion. I'm Darby. And I'm Curtis. Oh, great. You weren't gonna do Curtis P. Jackson? You don't have a P? Honestly, I've never seen the show, so I didn't know what I was okay. supposed to do. Okay. Um, you may have noticed that we are at the beach, beach, and Alexis has drowned, but we love this show so much, we wanted to keep it going. And until we locate her body, we're not exactly sure that she's drowned. She could just yeah. be getting a hot dog. I don't know. She could just be doing a float. Yeah, she loved the episode so much. She said, let me go think about it. I'm gonna go float in the ocean for a minute. That sounds Very just calming. like Alexis. Very relaxing. Yeah. No, so Alexis is, you know, she works. She works nonstop and Drag Race works nonstop. So on occasion, she needs a break, okay? I didn't even give her the option. I said, you stay home, you stupid bitch. You just didn't want to invite her on vacation, did you? You stupid bitch. She's come on vacation. We, we went, we did cruise. Well, I guess she invited me. <laughs> yeah, I've never invited her. Can she come to Christmas though? I was supposed to ask you that. Oh no. I'm doing it on camera, so you can't say no. Oh yeah, we'd we'd love to have her. No, we would love to have her. Yeah. His family's coming in town, so. We have to make the Yuletide gay. Sister, brother-in-law, and mom, dad, they fly in, and we're gonna an Airbnb, and we're gonna do family, family, family. Yes. I'm excited. It's gonna Are be great. Excited? There's a fireplace at the Airbnb. Oh, okay. I thought you were just saying in general, fireplaces exist. Oh, cool. Well, they do, just in case they, anyone's wondering. They still do. If you're watching this thousands of years into the future, we don't know if they do still exist, but here in our if time, If this survives do. thousands of years, something has gone wrong. Okay, this, society This show doomed. should be put onto the platinum disc that they shoot into space, you know, along gold. with- Gold. Uh, they shoot gold disc. Yeah, but platinum is so much cooler, right? Aliens don't know that. Mm. Yeah, I'm so excited because we've been here for what, a year and a half and family has not come to visit us yet. So I'm so excited. Well, my sister excited. did. And oh, my um, brother-in-law did. Oh, I guess he did. Well, he didn't come to visit us. He came to meet Elon Musk. And all our aunts and uncles. No, and uh, those that's not cousins. True. That's not true. Oh no, that was the Beverly Hillbillies. That big, big family in Beverly Hills. I know who they are. With the, the grandma on top. Yeah. Watch your head, Granny. With the grandma on top. She was in the rocker on top. I just want to go ahead and let everyone know, I'm so sorry you can't see my eye roll because I'm wearing sunglasses, but just know it's happening. We are going to get into this episode of Drag Race UK. We're already on episode four. I can't believe wow. it. Now, this is one of the few that you do, you keep up with this one. You watch this one. I take notes. I... Well, you don't take notes and you do play on your phone. And no, no, that's my, that's my notes app. I'm doing my notes app, okay. taking notes. So we're just gonna chat through it. If you have any questions, keep them to yourself. We're gonna start with the mini challenge. Now, this mini challenge was SPNK. You ever heard of it? I get it, Okay. I get it. They're got, so clever, they're got so a little funny. On your nose. No, that's um, SPF. Okay. So they have to get into boy drag and then they have to pose and they have to say something dirty and like, it's fine. Listen, I love a dirty joke. Do not get me wrong. But I just feel like on Drag Race, we're just constantly being hit over the head with a giant dildo. Right. But. But that's the funny, brand. Cute. And they yeah. are very consistent. What would your spunk uh, tagline be? Ooh, okay, 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 wait. Okay, I'm in boy drag. I'm showing off my muscles. <clears throat> ooh. I've got little ones. <clears throat> okay. Spunk. Now with pineapple. Get it, because it's sweet? Yeah. Okay. That's good. What's yours? Um, spunk. Swim more laps when you're full of swimmers. Because if you're swimming at the gym. Wait, wait, no, I got that and, too. Um, I really love our dynamic. Tamara wins, I guess, for a reason that RuPaul knows. Happy for her. But the big thing is they are doing a disaster class challenge. L-O-L. Now, Ru was promoting, well, I guess, yeah, I guess she was promoting her master class. And it is something, Curtis, that I've wanted for a long time. And every time my birthday or Christmas comes up, you always ask, is there anything you really want? And I always say, well, it would be nice to know what RuPaul thinks about being nice yourself. Nice to master the art of drag. It would be nice. Oh, no, that's not what her master class is about. It's about like loving yourself and accepting yourself. Oh. And she just talks directly to the camera the whole time. That sounds intense. Yeah, and it costs money. Can I have it? Sure, why not? If Great. there's anything that I want, it's for you to love yourself more. So that I don't right. have to. <laughs> Fellas, am I right? Fellas, am I right? These ladies always needing all your love. All your love. 
Okay, honeymooners. So <laughs> tomorrow gets to pick the teams. They're gonna be in three teams of three. Oh, nine girls, three times three is nine. She picks some of the funny girls. There's a little bit of drama because she doesn't pick Kara, but I completely understand why she didn't pick Kara for a comedy challenge. I think it makes sense to me. Of course. But I also understand why Kara kind of kept that drama going because hey, camera time is camera time. If she couldn't be funny, then she had to be dramatic. Do the comedy or drama? Comedy or drama, yeah. comedy or drama. Did you do, okay, I should know this. I understand that. Did you do drama in high school? No, um, right? I... You did sport. When I was in elementary school and middle school, we had to do sports. So I was a you sports person. You had to person. do? Yeah. What does that mean? You were required to do a sport. I went to a private school. Okay. For a while until they kicked me out. I did lots of sports. I was very sporty. I was a lacrosse goalie. I was on the football team. You I loved sporty baseball. Spies. I was a wrestler. But I did a lot of theater in elementary, middle school, like summer theater camp and community theater and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is one of my favorite stories. Can you tell your Steve Buscemi story? <laughs> <laughs> I went to a summer theater camp with Steve Buscemi's son. How old were you? Uh, 13, something sure. like that, 12. Sure. Um, 11, possibly. Anyway, so Steve Buscemi's son was at this theater camp, and so at the end of the, the what session... What did he look like? Like Steve Buscemi. He does. Oh, that sucks. Steve Buscemi's had a very long, illustrious career. And I'm Not sure it was all looking. to his looks. Shut up. Well, on the last day, all the parents show up to pick up their kids, and I was not going to miss a chance to go say hi to Steve Buscemi. And so I went up to him and said, hey, man. As every 12-year-old's dream. Of course. Well, I was in the arts, you know. Yeah, so of course, I, of course, of uh, course. You understood. had a deep understanding yeah. of the cinema. And appreciation. Um, so I said, hey, can I get your autograph? Because these are the days of autographs. Yeah. Nobody cares about autographs anymore, right? I had an autograph book filled with, like, Eeyore and Mickey Eeyore and Mouse. Daffy Duck. Yeah. And Goofy, who, who does Duck? who does the that's the, Warner Brothers the baby. backwards G. Oh yeah, what an idiot. Anyway, so I asked for his autograph, and he begrudgingly gave me his autograph, and then I said, "Can I get a picture?" And I held up my little Kodak disposable, disposable camera, yeah, and he goes, "I'm with my family." And I said, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Jimmy. Yes, of course. To a 12-year-old. But I, I mean, get it. No, 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 I understand. I wouldn't have even given me the autograph. What? Yes, you would. Yeah, I would. I don't know. A 12-year-old? I guess, well, in his defense, it would have started a line. There would have been yeah. a line of 12-year-olds. I get it. I don't. A group of I hold nothing against Steve Buscemi. If you're listening, Steve, thank, I'm sure you thank are. Thank you for being thank a patron. You. Yeah. I know you have a lot of options in Drag Race reviews, and I really appreciate you coming to us. He gave up on Mara Mangle for us. It's really, really considerate. So if you want to be like Steve Buscemi, join our Patreon. You our. think he would go for the uh, sponsorship? You think he'd be... Our mascot? Our mascot? <laughs> you can't call someone a mascot, that's so fucked up. You said he's horrible looking. I didn't say horrible, I just said if you're his child and you look like him, that's tough. So let's get into the talks. Actually, before we do that though, let's talk about RuPaul. The theme, I don't know if you can tell, the theme is slaycation, lol. I loved this look. Look at RuPaul's little slaycation look. Oh, it's it's cabana wear, it I is cruise, it's white lotus. I we love, love Chloe. it. I also love a staycation. I highly recommend staycations. Going yeah. to a hotel, we've done that a couple times. Although once we stayed at, well, I don't want to put them on blast because I'm, I'm over it, I really am. Remember when we were at a hotel and I drank one of the beers out of the mini bar and it was just <laughs> water because the person had taken it, drank the beer and then filled it back up with water. And pressed the cap back on. pressed the cap back on. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But like, it's it is gross. a big deal, it's gross. Anyway, so they brought me up a regular, like an actual beer that had not been opened previously, but not for free. I still had to pay for it. Yeah. Uh, it's the Thompson Hotel. It was twice the amount of the room. For the beer. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing I was really upset about, okay? All right, so our first group were discussing work with an E. Naomi, Dee Dee, and Kate Butch. So let's start with Dee Dee. I gotta be honest. Now you know because you watch our show all the time. I'm not her biggest fan, but I'm also very aware how young she is and people change and grow over time and she might just need more time. But I was really impressed with her. I thought she did great. Yeah. I thought she, she held her own. She, she held her own. She had calm, cool, collected. Yeah, and she had a couple little jokes like her acronym thing was really cute. I mean, it was dildo, but dildos can be funny. There they go, hitting us over the head with it again. And then we move over to Naomi. Oh. Yeah. I can tell just by the way you uh, inflected your voice that I'm supposed to be disappointed with her performance. I wasn't disappointed in her. I was disappointed in her actions. <laughs> <laughs> 
I hate to watch people fail. At one point, I can't remember the phrase she said. She repeated this phrase. Let's say it's, for instance. She was like, for instance, when you go to the bar, like, for instance, you're at the bar and then you have to get the drink. For instance, and if you have a- Standing there just for an instant. <sighs> I mean, she was drowning, but she looked pretty. I like when pretty people drown. Yeah, that's why we are all drawn to the Natalie Wood story. That's so dark. You know who was on the boat when she drowned? Christopher Walken. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? He's Christopher never talked Walken. about it. I want to know what he heard. I gotta be honest, I can't, allegedly, this is all just my opinion. He could have helped. He could have turned into Christopher Swimmin and saved the day. Thank you, thank you. You know why she was so scared of the water? Do you know the story behind Natalie Wood being scared of water? Because she knew that it would bring about her untimely end. Kind of. When she was a child actor, she was in a movie where she was on a bridge and the bridge got washed out. The director decided he wanted a more natural reaction, so he didn't tell her that that's what was going to happen. They just washed her away, this child, off this bridge without telling her that they were going to do that, and she almost drowned. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's filmmaking, baby. Have you heard about and that's why we strike. Did, <laughs> for those poor drowning children. Did I tell you about the TikTok? I did. The TikTok of the mom and dad, they wanted to play a prank on their kids. Oh, yeah. So the dad told their kids that, that the they mom ate all died. the Halloween candy. Oh no, yours is worse. So then finally we have Kate Butch. Now Kate Butch is a stand-up comedian. I was ready to see her be funny and she did not disappoint. And I love that the guest judge when giving her critiques was like, if I was doing improv, I would want you on my team because I know that you would catch me if I fell. And I love that. I love watching these comedy challenges when I know for sure that there's some girls I don't have to worry. Okay, you love improv. And we've been to a fuck ton of improv shows since we've lived here. Of course. And you know that there are a few people on that stage that whenever they're in a scene, they'll fix it. Yes. And you know, there's a couple people where like, it depends on where it goes. Yeah. Our and then there's like that one person that I know anytime they step up to initiate, Drew's going to sink his uh, nails into my thigh. I won't go to a show if there's a specific life. person in it. And the last time we were at Dynasty Typewriter, we were watching the like- up Coming and, soon. Yeah. And he was on like four of the posters. And I was like, well, I guess we'll guess be coming I'm never here coming for a while. It was a straight man, if you need to know. You don't need, you knew already. But every good comedy duo does have a straight man and the clown. So we can't write off straight men entirely. Not all straight men. Ew, number one. Number two, which one are you in this scenario? I think I'm a straight clown. Okay. Our second group was definitely the best by leaps and bounds. They were doing party. Party. We like to party. Sorry if you don't. What's that? Disco biscuits. It's for like one of your fans. No, What's there's up, not B4L? a single person that watches this that likes jam bands. There can't be, right? Come on, come through, comment section, blow it up. Share your favorite brownie meme. Okay, I don't want them to turn this off. These were all the girls from the North. Can you do a Northern accent? Oh, yes, it's so British okay. up here. What I really liked about this one was all the other groups, they had, I'm talking about this and I'm only talking about this and then I'm talking about this and I'm only talking about this. But this group, they all talked together. So every point they made, they all were talking back and forth. I loved that. Yeah. They made it more like a skit. Kept it flowing, kept it bouncing. Yeah. A little game of zip zaps up. I was so impressed with all of them. And then Tamara turned into the carrot top of drag and she did props. They were all so funny. There wasn't a moment where I was going, uh. Instead, the whole time I was going, ah. Uh. I heard you. And then the final group, yikes. It was the love group. I was really excited for this group initially because Vicky was talking about her and her husband, partner, I don't remember, how they're in an open relationship and how they navigate that. And I thought that was interesting. And then Banksy is with a trans woman, which is not something that she initially thought she wanted. And then how she came to actually love the person for the person. I was excited to hear about that. And then Kara is loveless. And I was excited to hear about that so I could understand Alexis better. But it never got there. It was just off the rails the whole time. It's like they had nothing to relate to each other about. 
right. I guess that was what was missing, is that they never really like tied together. Again, it was like, I talk about this, you talk about that, you talk about that. Now, I will say, not in this point, but when they were getting ready, Vicky and Banksy were talking about their relationships, and Banksy got to talk really in depth about their partner, Ole, and just about their her. family, and yeah, like sort of coming out twice. Yeah, when they got together, it was before her transition, and then how they navigated that together, and truly, it's all about communication. Okay, that's something that took us about, what, 12 years to learn? That we have to actually talk to each other? About what? Ugh. And I felt for them because we've all had moments, whether it be on a stage or just in front of a few people at work or whatever, where you've said something that didn't go over well and you're just stuck there. Like you have to keep talking or keep presenting. It's the worst feeling. I mean, a paper cut's pretty bad too. This bad. I'm trying to think about you at work saying something embarrassing in front of a couple people. Is that this? Is that, is this work? Are these the people? Then we take it to the runway. The runway, again, is Slaycation. So up first we have Dee Dee Licious, the oldest 20-year-old. Now, I loved this. It gave me kind of what Rue was wearing, actually. She brought a baby. I never go on vacation without a baby. Yeah. So I appreciated that. And then she revealed into a matching thong. Where's the baby? She tucked it under oh, her arm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like just you keep do. It safe. Just, yeah. you know, stow and go. She did look eight. 100 years old well, with her... an eight week old baby? <laughs> it's her granddaughter, okay? That's kind of her thing. She introduced herself as a MILF, which again, I'm still coming to terms with that. As a 20 year old choosing to be 60 in drag, I don't understand it. You know, as a very young queen, my, as a 20 year old myself, well, of course. I go for something much younger. Uh, age appropriate. Yeah, look how perky these are. Then we had Kate Butch. Now listen, Kate Butch is funny. And so I appreciated the funny of this outfit. I liked that it was scuba. I loved the heels that had the little rhinestone flippers on the front. Yes. That was so cute. The netting, but I agree with RuPaul because I think RuPaul said the exact same thing where she was like, it's funny, your outfit's funny. <laughs> And it's just not fully realized. Yeah, it's like something's missing. Did she have a tank? No, she had the little <laughs> sucky straw. What oh, the snorkel? Snor oh. Okay, that makes more sense. My favorite line of the entire episode, though, was RuPaul was giving her critiques, and she said, there is a color of blonde for every person out in the world, and this blonde is not your color. I would shrink away and die. I mean, she told it in a funnier way, and they, everyone was laughing, but I... Tell us below in the comments what your favorite blonde color that Darby's ever worn. Listen, they all work for me. When I started drag, I was like, that is so basic. Everyone does blonde hair. I'm only gonna do dark hair, which for my skin tone, it just doesn't work, okay? And when I finally found blonde, I felt like I I changed. For the better. But you used to, you weren't really rocking that dark hair like loud and proud. You were like pulling it to the side and kind of like <laughs> demurely kind of, um, oh, maybe I have I a have wig, this, maybe I don't. <laughs> I have this idea that I had a square jaw, which it was a lot, squarer in the in the past and oh, that we're getting a little bit more workout i need it okay to show that that's so attractive that's what people want to see that's when they come to a drag show they're looking for those they're looking for big, big, big giant, giant man jaws. jaws yeah listen i was i was turning gender on its head i was flipping it anyway speaking Turn of flipper i did like the flipper i just here's what i think about kate butch she's very quick to call herself ugly which i don't love but i hope that it challenges her is it because um she beats you to the punch yeah was 100% it. I simply adore her, and I hope that once the show has finished, that, like, I mean, all girls that go on Drag Race, their drag grows and changes, I mean, except for Serena Cha Cha. So I, I'm really excited to see her growth, because I simply, as a drag queen, I adore her. Good. Thank you for that. Then we had Naomi. I liked the idea of skiing as a vacation, as a slaycation, something you've expressed interest in. I don't love that it was an actual just ski suit that she added stones to for a couple reasons. Number one, she was like, I've stoned the fuck out of this. And when they closed up, you could see them, but I couldn't see them from far away, which tells me they weren't AB stones. Mm. And if the Church of Tenderoni has taught us anything, it is always use AB lest 
you be saved. I did like the little cocaine nose. That was cute. Oh, because you're doing it too. I also just want, I want a drag element to it. I don't want you to take the actual thing and just add stones to it. I wanted it to be sexier. I want to see your legs or, you know, I mean, you're not actually going out in the snow, bitch. <laughs> She is beautiful though. Like this. Okay, up next we have Tamara. She would die instantly if she were in the snow in this, but she's a drag queen. So she's dragging it up. I loved this. Yeah. And I love her body. I, I loved everything about it. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Then we have Michael Maroli. Now, Michael Maroli. <laughs> Michael. Initially, I didn't know what was happening. And I was like, why did she bring her own background? It didn't make sense to me. Then we get the turnaround and we find out it's a postcard. I wish there had been a border around it and like maybe a little, you know how those cheesy postcards have like in Comic Sans or weird script, it'll be like. Puerto Vallarta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish it had been clearly a postcard from the beginning because at first I was like, that. What are you, huh? But once I knew it was a postcard, it's cute. It's a little simple, but it's cute. Yeah, she put all the time into making the postcard. Okay, <laughs> this was nuts. Then we had Ginger. Oh, you know I love Ginger Johnson. But what the fuck? She did say she made this, what, two hours two before hours. she left for Drag Race? And that's impressive because I can't believe she spent two hours on that. Curtis. But yes, she said, well, my vacation is to the, to the moon or whatever, to, the moon. to, the, to, to Mars. To, to, to the moon. It's a little too the moon. outside the box. It's almost in a completely different box. She was very fortunate that her group won because I don't love her though. Then we had another kind of strange one, Vicky. She said she was going on vacation to the States. For those of you who have never been to the States, this is what we wear. It's all a rodeo. The time. It's constant rodeo. We have pigs, we have cow, you know, you're familiar. I go back and forth with these prompts. Sometimes I really like when people take it so far out of the box. There's such a different interpretation so that we're not just getting people in swimsuits and swimsuits and swimsuits. But then sometimes it can be taken a little I don't like that there had to be such an explanation for me to understand it. It's cute, don't get me wrong, but I don't know, I didn't love it. I did agree with RuPaul when she said, I was waiting on a reveal because you just look like a rectangle and I was just waiting for you to rip that open. And maybe then she'd have like a bathing suit on. You know, we wear bathing suits to the rodeo too. I don't know if you know that. Have you ever been to a rodeo? No, I haven't. I would go to a rodeo. Of course. I have been to the running of the bulls in Southern France, Montpellier. I was just thinking like rodeo, fucking Wait, bronco, the like rodeo clowns, professional bull riding. Yeah, in high school, I went on a like study abroad. See, now I'm gonna have no new story for next year. Oh yeah, that's true. If I Shit. Really okay, don't tell me anymore, one. don't tell me anymore. Then we had Caramel, no notes. 10 out of 10. I didn't think I would like the waist thing because it is so matte compared to everything else. But as it moved, she used AB stones. I loved it. Yeah, well, although it is pretty just generic like winter. She's not clearly going down the slopes. Right, it's not necessarily the vacation. I mean, she, yes, she, like, she looks like a winter wonderland goddess and I hope she gets an avalanche of tips for this look, but it's not giving a, a place or an activity for me. No, you're right. But it's so gorgeous. Oh God, I want to look like this. Okay. And you can attend her masterclass. Well, you won't get me RuPaul's. You're definitely not going to buy me caramels. Well, I don't want you to love yourself, but I do want you to go somewhere. <laughs> That's true. Finally, we had Banksy. <laughs> I can't handle her. Every runway. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? It's, Are you kidding? It's pretty meh. Shut the fuck up. This is I'm incredible. Just this is elevation. Yes. It is this so is gorgeous. what Anastasia Beaverhausen would wear. 100%. 100%. To the chalet. 100%. She just looks so gorgeous and she's so skinny. She Same. did say, she said, I'm very long. She's super tall. She's like crazy tall. I know. We had to turn the TV portrait. Thank God we, to we be broke able to the get stand, the so we are able to do that. And then one thing I, I love the editors of this show because they are so quick to shade Michelle. So Michelle is telling Dee Dee, she can tell that her nose contour is lighter and you're on the right path, you know, meaning go a little lighter. Right. Now I don't contour my nose, so I don't know what that's like. I was born with this beautiful nose. is just naturally nose. light 
So she says that, you know, like, keep working at it sort of thing. And then Rue goes, I actually think it's really nice. I think it's at the perfect level. And then they cut to Michelle and she's just kind of got like a face on and the music goes, so funny. That they should have so gone harder. Funny. They didn't have like some shot of her like going like that or something. Well, or they're like constantly doing eyes. that. I don't know if they still do it, but on American Drag Race, a lot of the times when they're doing the judging talk, Rue will transition to the girls coming back by saying, silence, bring back my girls. And they always silence while Michelle is talking, always. I don't know what editor she's hurt, but thank you. That's funny. It's drama. They're gonna get an Emmy. They've already gotten a ton. Do you know Doesn't that? Doesn't mean they can't get more. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. I love it. It's quality television. Emmys. So we find out the winning team is the girls from the North and they all get badges. So we are on episode four and all of the six badges they've given out so far have been given out to six different queens. That's shocking. It I really was is. blown away. When it, I just heard that right now. Right? It sounds shocking, doesn't it? No, but it really is, because usually with these shows, you know, there will be a front runner. You know, we'll be on episode four and there will already be somebody with two badges. But this one, it is an even playing field. I love that. Anyway, so they win and then we found out everybody else is in the bottom. Now listen, we cut to Vicky, Kara, and Banksy. Vicky gets her critiques first and Vicky says, I just want to say something. I wish I had spoken up and I wish I had been the moderator because I think I could have done a better job. Basically saying I could have done a better job. And then when she says that, Caramel reaches over and is like, I love you girl. Like, I agree with you. Then Kara gets her critiques and she says, well, there were a couple lines missed, like the intro line, I wasn't able to introduce myself. You know, just really deflecting the blame. Then finally Banksy. And Banksy is the one who they've been deflecting the blame to. So Banksy, very honestly, and I thought respectfully, was like, I gotta be honest, I feel like I'm a pig to slaughter. Like I feel like they- a lamb to slaughter? Lamb, what did I say? A pig. Oh, well they get slaughtered. They get gassed. Not in our house house. That's true. You're safe here, pigs. So Banksy's like, yeah, I feel like a lamb to slaughter and I'm a little upset about it. I feel like they're just throwing me under the bus. And instead of Rue kind of being like, well, they made some points, she agrees with Banksy. Yeah, I mean, as an audience member, as someone watching, I didn't see you messing up. Like, I didn't see you being the one that was the problem. And you could see Vicky and Kara were not excited about that. So then they go back to the workroom and then Vicky, again, the person who started this, by the way, Vicky's like, I just feel like Banksy threw us under the bus. Banksy crawled up out from under the bus and just said, to wag her finger and say, no, no, no. And just said, don't do this to me. What happened was Rue did not respond the way that they wanted her to. And suddenly they're the victim. I'm sorry, that was fucked. So she says that. And then of course, Caramel jumps on and she's like, yeah, that was fucked up. You shouldn't have done that. And Banksy's like, you were saying that it was me. And they're like, I didn't say your name. <laughs> and Banksy's like, should have cut right who back else to could it have been? Her saying it. So then Banksy, who is not a confrontational person, who doesn't like these fights, she gets up and walks away. And she's like, fuck you. And she walks away and good on ya. Sometimes you just gotta take yourself out of the situation. I like that she didn't feed into it. And then while she's gone, of course, Vicky and Kara keep going. And I love that Kate Butch was like, well, I understand where she's coming from. And then in her talking head, she's like, they are deflecting the blame. Like they had nothing to do with it. After Banksy had time to calm down, she comes back in and she's like, hey, if I threw you under the bus, I didn't mean to. I was just feeling very attacked and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sorry for that. And then Kara softened because she didn't expect her to come back so quickly with an apology and so level-headed. So Kara's like, yeah, I'm sorry too. That's not what I meant. It just, it bummed me out because they never quite admitted that they were the ones that started it. Do you think the producers Ugh. were like just off camera? Like, oh, I wanted a fight. I mean, they got one. And of course, moving into the next episode, you know, the episodes start like right after the previous episodes, they come back and they still kind of unpack what happened in the previous mm -hmm. episodes. I'm sure they're gonna bring it up again. Kara, I understood, cause Vicky had already started that boulder going. Because listen, if you're on Drag Race, there are no rules. You're just trying to save your skin. You don't want to get sent yeah. home. So I understand the impulse to deflect blame, but Vicky started it. And I just, I just want her to say, hey, you know what? I did actually start that and I'm sorry about that. That sucked, but I was just trying to save my skin and listen, every man for himself. 
once the boulder is rolling, you gotta either dodge it, catch it, and carry it up the hill. You better sissy fist that walk. Sisyphus? Did the boulder go up the, the hill? Except from Indiana Jones. Then we find out the bottom two are Naomi and Kara. And I would say rightfully so. Well, listen, Naomi hurt her knee, and I think they just, they wanted to get her do? out of there. So, oh, she wasn't that great. Anyway, they do a lip sync. Naomi's kind of fucked because she can't move. And Kara's a great performer, and Kara... Immediately sits down, bends her knee, <laughs> She did shows sit it down. Off. She's just like, she like look like, at my working look, knee. Look, I can sit crisscross. Kara wins the lip sync, so we say goodbye to Naomi. I'm bummed to see her go this early, because I really do love her. But I also want her knee to get better. And the longer she stayed there, the more she was going to push it. I thought so. you were going to say you wanted her drag to get better. I think there's a level of polish that is still happening with her. She's pretty young. But so far, what she's presented is really good. She's got those old knees, though. Yeah, she does have the knees of a me-year-old. All right, so that was Drag Race UK episode four. What did you think? I thought that it was the exact right length. Mm. Uh, the volume was perfect, yeah. and I definitely watched the whole thing. What did you think of the cinematography? Oh, the picture kept kept moving consistently up, and there were like pictures of food, and then like uh, you, you were know, on Instagram. That was your Instagram feed. Oh. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to watch with us next week, he will not be here, I promise you. You can go ahead and hit that subscribe button and of course the notification bell. We're also on Cameo, not Curtis. He's he's holding off on that But let now. us know in the comments if you'd like me to be. Maybe we'll get started. Yeah, let us know. Go ahead and hit us up there. We're also, we do Shamio, so go to imhotheshow.com and you can get a special message. You get your own episode, you get the background, it's so fun. With me and Alexis, not Curtis, again, not Curtis. And also all of our merch is at dragqueenmerch.com. Okay, we'll see you next week, goodbye. Bye-bye. Yeah. Great job, babe. Thank you, I watched it, you. I watched it. I'm proud of you. No one's arguing with you. You're the one that keeps saying you didn't. What? No, I keep saying that I did, I definitely did. I keep really doubling down and really pushing the I will that I say, did. you were on the couch while it was on. It's not like I fell asleep. It's not like we were watching a, a Mike Flanagan show and I fell asleep. I'm liking House of Usher though. <laughs> no, I am, I am as well. But I fell asleep in the middle of one of the episodes. Well, you, had, you worked all night. Yeah. And Mike, and I mean, as good a writer as say Mike it, Flanagan say is, it, say it. Mike Flanagan has a style, and Mike Flanagan likes to write a monologue. He loves a monologue. Loves a monologue. He doesn't just write monologues. He writes a whole goddamn pile of logs. And his characters oh. are so cold that you need to take those logs and you need to build a fire. And you better sit next to that fire and drink your 21-year single malt scotch. And you better enjoy it, because that fire... It's gonna burn hot. It's gonna burn bright. It's gonna burn longer and stronger than anything you've ever known. And the smoke from that fire is gonna fill the sky. It's gonna blot out the sun. And with no sun, whole nations of people are going to go sick because of lack of vitamin D. But you know what has vitamin D? Mushrooms. The mushrooms that you've been growing this whole time. And you better sell Wait, those mushrooms me. like you are me on Summer Tour Fish 1994. Wait. And you better charge people for those mushrooms because you gotta charge them. You gotta charge them hard and fast like a lightning cable Curtis. plugged into a USB C stop, stop. cable. Curtis, aren't you tired? Oh, I was just showing what a Mike Flanagan monologue is like. That whole oh, time, that's I'm sure. True camera would have been that's right here. That's the thing. Oh, that's why I didn't like about Midnight Mass. It's because it was just a series of monologues. This one, I have to say, House of Usher is much better. There's not as many. But there's this, let's be honest, pretty insignificant character who has now given like three super long monologues. And I'm like, who are you, sir? You just need to be the catalyst to get this guy started off on his journey. I don't need to hear about your car and your wife. Who are you? Anyway, other than that, I like it. Again, because I like to, I love seeing people die on TV and movies, yeah. just not animals. And there have been a couple animal deaths, be careful. But it's just, That's it's ketchup. Happened. It's just ketchup. They also don't look real. It's and magic. I appreciate that. The props department did a really bad job and I, hats off. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Saved me some grief. That's great space work. Thank see, you. you can see we've been going to improv. Thank you. We have. I do want to say thank you to everyone who came to Fat Slut this last weekend with uh, me and Alexis there. I always get so excited 
to meet people who watch our show and then like us enough to come out to a show that we're doing. That's so fucking nice. So thank you so much to everyone who came out, who posted videos yeah. of, let's be honest, an amazing performance. Both, really. You all so really good. impressed Meatball. It, it's just so nice to meet people and I, I try my hardest to be as engaged as possible because sometimes I just get overwhelmed. I'm like, I don't want to say the wrong thing. I want to be friendly, but I don't want to be too friendly. I just get in my head because you know, at the end of the day, People are just people. I will say... Until they get canceled. A couple people... Why would you say that? A couple people asked about you. There were a couple people who asked where Curtis was. Oh, really? Oh, I wish I could have been there. And I said, well, you could have. You texted and said that you weren't coming. And I let them know. I showed them the screenshot of you texting and saying, hey, I'm not going to Wish come. I could make it, but I just have this other show to go to. No, you got Jack in the Box and came home. Did I get Jack in the Box? Don't tell me if you did. It'll make me upset. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Okay, bye. We'll see you at the beach. Beach?